Hello again, everyone. This is Search for a Nonviolent Future, coming to you from the Meta Center. We're working our way through this book. And I was commenting last time on a long quotation from Marshall Frady, the Southern writer, writes for The New Yorker. And this was from an article on Jesse Jackson about Martin Luther King. And I think it encapsulates what nonviolence can do. And I ended on the phrase uh, that an, an oppressor can be momentarily reborn as a human being. I don't know how, to what extent, Marshall Frady was aware of the significance of what he said. But this is a theme that I'm going to be emphasizing throughout, and I'm probably even more than when I wrote Search for a Nonviolent Future. In other words, the idea that in some way, nonviolence is who we are. Nonviolence is the core of human nature. It's not just a mode of responding, it's a mode of being. And that, uh, in a way, nonviolence is our destiny. And we will never really truly realize who we are as human beings, as a, as a race, and as individuals until we learn that we are capable of responding to nonviolence when it's offered to us. We're capable of learning how to offer it to others and that that is the way that the world is going to go forward and the human beings are going to grow to their highest potential. But because I'll be coming back to that again and again, I, I want to leave that idea in your minds right now and go on to discuss uh, a quote of Gandhi's where he says quite simply, and he has a tendency to be simple, very direct, he says, power is of two kinds. One is obtained by fear of punishment and the other by acts of love. Now, if you stop and think that uh, we exist in a force field, in an ener en energic field, different kinds of forces are operating in that field. But in human terms, they can always be reduced to one of two forces. Uh, the ancient Jewish scholars and sages talked about Yetzir Hara and Yetzir Hatov. There is a destructive urge and there is a constructive urge. Nonviolence, of course, is a way of employing the constructive urge. Violence is a way of employing the destructive urge. And uh, recently, long after writing Search for a Nonviolent Future, I ran across an extremely interesting quote by a former head of uh, Shin Beit, the Israeli security uh, agency, who said that because of the militarism, we are uh, winning every battle and going on to lose the war. That quote struck me forcibly because a year or two earlier, I had read a quote by one of the biographers of Mahatma Gandhi, who said, we are not nonviolence is the kind of thing where you can lose every battle and go on to win the war. The exact opposite of violence. Because in violence, you can sometimes get a short-term victory, but you will always get a long-term defeat. In nonviolence, you can sometimes get a short-term victory. There are approximately, actually, more often than not, if you, if you do it correctly, very often. But even if you fail at your immediate goal in nonviolence, you will go on to accomplish a long-term result. And that explains why, in trying to solve every problem through violence, domestic, international, we just keep lurching from crisis to crisis and things get worse. And again, recently, there has been a study showing that nonviolent insurrections lead to democracy and democratic freedoms more often than violent ones, even when the nonviolent ones fail. That is, the movement has expended itself, the same dictator is still there. Your friends are all in jail. Maybe you're in there with them at, at best. Um, and yet the country is going to move a little bit towards democratic freedoms. Whereas you can violently overthrow a regime, and we, you, don't need to, you don't need to hear me reciting all the examples of this, and yet the country deteriorates into further violence. And more often than not, you just have another dictator come and take his place. So. 
on this encouraging thought that you really cannot lose with nonviolence, except in the very short term. Uh, we'll end it up for now, and uh, I'll go on to talk about some of the new developments in science and why it has been so difficult for us to see nonviolence, even though it is ubiquitous. Until next week.